Stop believing these lies. Let's propel you forward as an artist. Starting now. Talent is everything. No, talent is not everything. A lot of artists just start like putting a few little lines on paper, putting a few little pieces of paint on canvas and they don't know what they're doing. It doesn't mean that, you know, you need to be super duper skilled, you know, it helps. But you know what? With art, you actually just ev like evolve as you go. My very first paintings that I started when I just started going down my art journey are nothing compared to the paintings today. Was I born, you know, with a <laughs> brush in my hands? No. Was I a great artist as a little kid? No. So it is something that you can definitely learn over time. You need expensive materials to make good art. Well, when I started, all I used was dollar store paint, dollar store brushes, everything dollar store. The canvases came from the dollar store, everything. So that is not very high end material at all. And it's perfect to start out that way because who wants to spend a ton of money, right? If you don't have money, I was on a budget, single mom, kiddos, you know, lots of other things going on in my life. I just did not really have money to, you know, start spending on more like expensive paints or whatever. So it's okay to start with very, very simple things. Now, do more higher quality paints um, like help your work? Yes, they do. But it's not necessary to get started. You have everything you need. All you really need is a drive to learn, is, you know, an idea or reference photo. You don't have to have everything already complete to start. I didn't have an easel to start. I just started painting on a flat surface on a desk or on a table. You can absolutely get started with cheap material. And over time, you can see what you might want to add or replace. But first, just get started. You do not need to invest into very expensive art materials. Find your style immediately. Not everybody knows what they are actually good at when they start with their art. I started with landscapes and I actually have my, my uh, tote out here and I can show you a few things that I kind of started with. Example of a, one of my very first paintings when I got started. It's a landscape. Another old painting. Another landscape. You get it. I started with landscapes. Why? I was inspired by Bob Ross. I mean, who isn't? But that's what got me going. And it kind of brought me into a make-believe world. You know, you know, sometimes you go through trials and errors in your life. And for me, painting was an outlet. And for me to just paint a landscape that I could you know, pretend I could escape into was really important for my mental health. So I started with landscapes. Do Am I still doing landscapes? No, at this point, at this moment, and you can see behind me, I'm working on animals. I shifted. You don't need to know what you really like right from the get-go. Also, your style can change. Like, I like to paint more realistically, um, but who is to say that I'm not going to end up painting in abstract, you know? That is the sky is the limit. There is no law. There is no rule that says you cannot change your style or you need to know your style. I mean, that's the beauty of an art journey. You get to discover as you go. Sometimes you try new things. You realize, nah, don't like this. And then you try something that you've never done before. And you're like, wow, I surprisingly enjoyed that. And you know what? That is totally okay. Artists should always feel inspired. I struggle with this one. I do personally, because sometimes there are my days are like full of all kinds of stuff and I have a painting on the go and I want to paint, but I don't feel like it. I really struggle here because I want to create from my heart. I want to create because I love to create, not because I have to create. And sometimes you just kind of have to work through that initial like, oh, I don't feel like it. It's raining. The coffee didn't taste good. My kid was not nice to me this morning. Yeah, there's lots of reasons that I sometimes tell myself, oh, I'm not gonna paint today. And it's okay, you don't have to feel inspired. Sometimes you need to just put that brush to canvas and within five, 10 minutes, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why I paint, you know? Put on some good music. Yeah, okay, I list, I dig the music. I'm just gonna like listen to the music and I'm just gonna do my thing. And then before you know it, I'm back into like, oh yeah, I'm enjoying myself. You don't always need to wait for ah, inspiration. Sometimes you just need to push yourself out there. Every piece must be a masterpiece. 
Well, if that were the case, I would not ever do anything. I have some paintings here I want to show you that are not masterpieces. I can tell you that, okay? I am not proud of this painting. This is my very first attempt ever at Northern Lights. And they don't look good, okay? Not a masterpiece. Not by any means. But I learned and it actually intrigued me to figure out how do you paint, you know? Northern Lights, especially with acrylics. Oils are a little easier because they blend so beautifully. There's a lot of TikTok shorts and reels out there that show the beautiful like swipe up, you know, of like oil paint and a brush and then magically you get beautiful Northern Lights. Doesn't work with acrylics, trust me. But the good thing about it not being a masterpiece, it makes me want to pursue, you know, to enhance my skills. So the next painting that I did with Northern Lights Still not a masterpiece, trust me. I kind of really went overboard on this one. Here is my next attempt at Northern Lights. Well, you can see the difference. It definitely looks better, but it's not great. But by researching, by looking at other artists, by, you know, working with the medium that I have and not with what I don't have, I managed to make this and I'm thinking, okay, the next time I'm going to do Northern Lights, they're probably going to look a little bit better. So trial and error. Right? So in this case, no, not masterpieces. This is also not a masterpiece, but it is a learning curve. And that's all that this is about. Art is a solitary activity. Well, it can be if you make it to be. <laughs> some artists are extroverts, some are introverts, others are a little bit of both. I'm more of an introvert. The, when I do art, I want to do it alone by myself because that is my kind of happy place i recharge my batteries by being completely by myself and being totally uninterrupted sometimes even the cat bothers me if she's around okay so yes it can be a very solitary activity but it doesn't have to be but is that healthy not necessarily it is good to be around other people that think the same way uh, one of these reasons is that i'm on youtube and i'm trying to you know communicate and make, create a little community of other artists on my channel but i also go to other artists channels is that a thing artists that sounds really weird anyway i go to other artists and their channels and i talk to people in the comments and I learn something from these people but I also sometimes add something and they learn from me and that is the beauty of this you don't have to do it all alone and have to figure it out all by yourself I am part of two different Facebook groups and they're local they're just in my area of other artists that post their art or that post their progress or they post that they're gonna be exhibiting at a show or something it's like you can support one another. You can go, yay, go you, or like, wow, that's a really cool piece. Or if they're struggling with something and they're asking a question and you might have an answer to that, you know, we just, you can help each other out. It, it does not have to be a very solitude journey because you know, that would just be sad. You should never copy other artists. Okay, there's a few things I wanna say here, but first and foremost, Yes, copy other artists. That's how I started. I mean, I like to paint along with Bob Ross and he actually asks you, let's do this together. Yeah, you know, the only thing you can do is sell that, right? Because that was not your idea, but there, it's a bit of a gray area. Personally, um, I do copy other artists, but it's for my own use. It's for my own growth and for my own journey. I mean, I have a, here, I've got an example. This is not a masterpiece. I'm being vulnerable here. I'm showing some very old work that I'm not necessarily proud of, but that is part of my journey, okay? So this painting I did, painting along with another person, and I will pull up the video or the thumbnail of that video um, of that particular artist, and does it look anything like her painting? No, it does not. But have I learned through this process? Absolutely. And this is why it's important to copy other people's work. I did a lot of recreation videos like daily art or wow art or something. I forget the exact name of that channel, but I'll look it up and I'll pop it up on the screen for you. I've done a lot of paint along videos with them. This is one of those videos. And sometimes you just need something to copy, something to duplicate and you learn so much along the way. So yes, this is not my original work or idea. And that's okay, because that way you can figure out where are my strengths, where are my weaknesses? The artist did this, 
but I have a different idea. And then just go to town because you know, your art, your work, your rules, you can do what you want. So yes, definitely copy other artists because how else are you going to learn? I so the top of this painting is a tree, right? Obviously, <laughs> seriously, don't tell me that's a unicorn. Okay. Then I'm, I'm going to be concerned for your health. So I painted this tree using a technique that I learned from a guy that I've mentioned before on my channel, Michael James Smith. He's, amazing at hyper-realistic paintings. And I'm like, I want to paint like this guy. So what did I do? I watched a bunch of his videos in which he explains how he paints trees and leaves. And this is the painting that I did as a total practice. And there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing I don't want to do is if I take someone's work and copy it to the T as I, you know, like totally duplicate it with my painting and then sell it because that in my opinion is wrong. There's a copyright, obviously, and there's a lot of people that say, well, as soon as you start painting it, if you don't use the exact same paints, the exact same brushes, the exact same, you know, placing of each single stroke, I mean, you've already altered it, so it's no longer a copy. I want to honor artists and what they do and what they initially came up with. I personally do not sell anything that I copied off of another artist. Here's the tree that I did. I love painting trees. I haven't done trees in a while. I, I found out by following this artist and starting to kind of sort of copy and duplicate his work and techniques that I actually was quite good at it. So tree. There is a right way to make art. Really? Really? If you want to use your hands and I'm talking acrylics. Okay. Don't do that with oils. Use your hands. Right? If you want to use a straw and blow, you know, through the straw, get the air going through it and splatter your paint that way rather than using brushes, <laughs> be my guest. Art is art, right? It is so subjective. You can use so many different things to make art. Now I'm talking obviously painting, but just because some book says this is the right way to do it. Does it mean you have to follow that to a T? No, that's the beauty of this. The sky is the limit. You don't always have to color within the lines. Okay. So, uh, explore, try out different things. You know what? I don't have this painting here because I gave it to somebody. One of the paintings I did when my channel kind of switched more to art content, I used a bobby pin. Okay. Of all things, because I did not have the kind of brushes that I have now. So I just used something else that I thought would work. Is that wrong? No, it's not. You can do whatever you want. Your art, your rules. You must go to art school in order to be an artist. Kind of ties in with the, there's a right way to do art. No, you don't have to go to art school. I didn't go to art school. <laughs> I absolutely did not. And look what I'm actually working on right now. I am living proof. Bloof. I am living proof that you don't have to go to art school. Am I saying it's a bad thing? No. Oh no. I mean, if I had known way back when that I was going to be doing art today, I might have gone to art school, but I did not. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of artists that are self-taught. There's, there's just some great fundamentals and basics. I'm pretty sure that will help artists, you know, in their journey that they can fall back on. Um, but you do not need to go to art school in order to paint. Like nobody says there's no rule. There's no law you know, go to Michael's and start buying paint supplies. And they're like, oh, hold on. Can I see your diploma? Did you go to art school? Like, come on. No, you do not need to have some sort of art degree in order to be a great and amazing artist. If people don't like your art, it's not good. Says who? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There are so many different opinions, so many different people out there. You know, I may look at a piece of art and think, Wow, that's ugly. And the next person might think that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It speaks to different parts of our beings, our soul. Like art is emotional. It is very like soul related or spirit related can be that way too. But you know, what might speak to me might not speak to somebody else. Just because one or two people don't like your art doesn't make it bad. Then they are just not the recipients of your art. And that is okay because there's a whole world out there with people that'll probably appreciate your art just because your mom thinks it's not good. Or, you know, your best friend doesn't think it's good. That doesn't mean anything. You don't stop. Don't ever stop. Don't give up. Keep going, keep learning, keep improving. Just because someone says your art isn't good. Oh my word. Nah, -uh. it says more about that person than it says about you. 
Only certain objects are worth painting or drawing or working on. Well, if I would just stick with like some certain subjects, I think I'm selling myself short. I think paint everything from, you know, a baseball to a feather, you know, to maybe just, you know, a person's hand instead of a whole body. Like, honestly, there are no rules again. Like, you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to paint, you know, the nose of a cat, paint the nose of a cat. Who says you can't do that? Who says that is not valuable? Who says you don't learn something from that? Because there's always an opportunity to learn and grow. Paint all the subjects that you want to paint. And sometimes paint subjects you don't want to paint just because that will teach you something too. It's not really all that complicated. I think we really limit ourselves when we start thinking, well, because it's not popular within the art world, I'm not going to paint it. I don't care what's popular. I want to do what I want to do. And what everybody else thinks, whatever. This is my art journey. If you don't like it, move along. I hope that by recognizing these mindsets that you might be able to kind of approach your artwork a little bit differently. And there are just these unwritten rules and laws out there that, that are just stupid and that people have accepted. Why? I don't know. But I've fallen into that trap too, especially, you know, about like, oh, I don't feel inspired, so I'm not going to paint. And some that, that is the big takeaway for me from this video. I'm like, got to, Sometimes you've got to push yourself. We've got to be careful there. You've got to be careful. You want to stay in a healthy balance. But just because, you know, your cat meowed at you wrong in the morning and now you don't feel inspired, that might just be kind of like, again, like selling yourself short. I'm hoping that, you know, kind of debunking these myths and just talking about these lies helps you out and makes you feel more empowered to go ahead and do what you want to do. And just don't really care about what people think. I mean, ultimately, this is your journey. So if you believe in your own art, you believe in what you do, it will eventually, you know, start to trickle into the world. And the world needs your art. The world needs your perspective on things. The world needs to see your beautiful creations. So no more holding back in your art journey. Ditch these lies. Replace them with truth. Know who you are. Be firmly grounded in who you believe you are. And for me, I am a Christian. That is important to me. Yes, I'm going to talk about Jesus for a minute because I know who I am in Christ. I know who, who, like that God created me for a purpose and for a time and for a season and that he does not make mistakes. And he knew exactly that I was going to be here today doing art right? And I just want to personally just give glory to the biggest artist of all, God himself. And to me, just knowing who I am in him and that he has my back and that he's cheering me on, that is a beautiful, beautiful foundation for me to, to make my, my art from. So, and I'm not sure what your foundation is and what you believe, but that is important to me. Stay happy, keep your peace, God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.